So generally, other than the, uh, how would you say, misinterpreting, purposefully misinterpreting the question and giving a silly answer, are there some other easy ways that people can add humor into conversations? Yeah. Um, okay. So how do we add humor into conversations? What I see, I'm coming back to a lot of the, the same things, which is your initial conversational tracks are going to be totally similar and they already are totally similar people say the same things if you're in college they want to know what major you have if they're if you're in the workforce they want to know what you do for a living so having both an answer that is true and reveals your values and a playful answer to a lot of these different things and you can answer what are the three questions that you could ask the most uh i literally went out and split tested these different things and would just would just answer different stuff at di different times in the nightclub or something like that so that is one that you can do because those are just going to be free gimmies. It's kind of like uncle jokes. The thing, the uncle's just prepared for you to say something <laughs> and you have, you have a ready-made response. Uh, in terms of more spontaneous conversational stuff, there's a lot of different types of humor. One of the, Russell Brand is very fast, clever, callback, witty. That's tougher to implement. An easy one is to say the opposite. And it sounds dumb, but if it's a super hot day and everyone's bitching about how hot it is, and you go out, you're like, Shit, man, it's cold out here. I swear to God, you will get a chuckle from people because what, what humor is in many cases is just when the unexpected occurs, it causes a chuckle. So it's not the funniest way to be funny. You know, you can be witty and clever and have interesting callbacks, but saying the opposite is a very easy way to just to get laughs and chuckles and, and insert humor if you're not. The other thing that I recommend people do because I do think that it's our brain's I guess this is more system one, just automatic, is you can prime yourself. So what one of, rather than thinking of humor, if I think how I did it, it wasn't by purposely working in uh, saying the opposite necessarily. It was by watching a lot of Chris Pratt before I would go out. I just like watched 10 minutes and I'd watch some Step Brothers best of clips and put myself in that mode of ridiculous non sequitur statement and i would just talk about prestige worldwide and screw you know investors possibly you <laughs> and point at people and just lift these lines straight out of movies into context that it didn't make any sense and that actually worked really well because it was i was enjoying it i was referencing movies that i had fun with and i was not taking all of the words that chris pratt would say but his general demeanor was was coming through so yeah trying to make like your fifth best friend the comedian that you most enjoy and the vibe that you want to have and just watching them for 10, 15 minutes before going into a social interaction was, was actually the way that I did it. That's a really cool way to use like recency mm -hmm. bias to mm -hmm. influence. Cause it's, it, we can't all be Tim Dillon, yeah. you know, that, that yeah. ability to be who I think actually now Tim is, as far as I can see, one of the quickest guys that's doing sort of conversations on this circuit. Like Tim's the gay Russell brand. At the moment, if you hear him on Rogan, <laughs> his ability, his ability to be unbelievably rapid. Do you see the uh, most recent Rogan where he said, do you think that there's other Epstein Islands? And he's like, yeah, better ones. Hilton's building them now. <laughs> there's just slides where the kids go immediately down and they're straight into yeah, a yeah. furnace. And you're like, holy fuck, that was off the cuff. That's disgusting. So there is, if, if you're serious about humor, and again, you don't, with this charisma stuff, uh, storytelling, humor. You don't need to be excellent. You truly, the bar is so low. You could say the opposite and you'll be the funniest person in a group of most people. But if you really want to go deep in humor, improv comedy classes are awesome. I used to take these uh, these classes at the pit in New York and there was one on the West Side in Los Angeles. They train you to, we talked about world building for flirting, like how to structure a thing, create a scene, all that kind of stuff. But the specificity that Tim Dillon is driving into is not and the tags that he adds to that, right? It's not just, oh yeah, there's better islands. He's got the slide into the furnace. Those are, those are uh, there's principles of comedy that guide that. And it takes a long time to be able to do it that quickly, but you can develop that skill through practice and they will teach you almost everything you need to know about that in an improv comedy class if it's, if it's any good. So that's another thing. Like if you really want to be funnier, improv comedy is, is where I would start. What's happening people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.